In today's fast-paced and ever-changing work environments, there is a seemingly endless variety of job tasks and functions which must be performed in a variety of work environments and industries. From heavy industry to food processing, from manufacturing to warehousing, from chemical operations to mining and construction, and everything in between. And while each of our job tasks may be different, our bodies and the need to protect them from harm are the same. There's a variety of safety equipment designed to protect every part of our body from harm, from our head down to our toes. This equipment is called personal protective equipment, and understanding its importance is the purpose of this program. Hard hats, safety eyewear, protective gloves, and safety footwear are just a few of the items designed to protect us from injuries caused by workplace hazards. Many hazards in our workplace have been eliminated or controlled through engineering practices, such as machine guarding or administrative controls. However, all hazards cannot be eliminated, and the primary means of protecting ourselves is through the use of personal protective equipment, commonly called PPE. PPE is considered the last line of defense against injury. Without it, there is nothing to keep that piece of hot slag out of your eye. Without PPE, there is nothing to stop a sharp edge from delivering a nasty cut. With no PPE, there is no barrier between you and the hazards of your job. Personal protective equipment is obviously important, yet each year countless injuries are suffered by employees who are not wearing the appropriate protection for their job. As we proceed with this program, we will discuss the proper selection and use of personal protective equipment and show examples of the painful results from making poor decisions concerning our personal protection. Your company has examined the job tasks and work environments at your facility to determine which hazards require the use of personal protective equipment. The company will provide you with the protective equipment necessary to perform your job in a safe manner and you will be trained on the selection and use of the particular equipment to be worn. Once trained, you will be able to properly put on and take off the equipment and understand which situations require its use. Different areas of a facility may have different PPE requirements. Make sure you know and understand these requirements before entering. Ask your supervisor any questions you may have concerning your protective equipment. Your safety is too important to be left to chance. Make sure you know and understand how to use the proper PPE before beginning any job task. Unfortunately, many workers know what PPE is required, but still choose not to use it. They often make excuses for not wearing it. But as Benny Loggins and Rafael Gonzalez found out, excuses offer little protection. Raphael and Benny were part of a crew assigned to inspect chemical piping as part of a planned renovation project. When Rafael and I got to the site, we had a list of systems to inspect. We knew it was a hard hat area, but since we were just inspecting, we didn't see what we had to wear. Raphael and Benny made a common error. They ignored PPE requirements because they didn't think they could apply to them. And when the workers above spilled some parts, One second, Rafi was standing there, and boom, he was down. He never even saw a coming. As Benny and Raphael found out, overhead hazards are not always obvious, and you can almost never see it coming. That is why it is so important to understand when head protection is required and to use it. You are required to wear a protective helmet, commonly called a hard hat in all situations where there is the potential for head injury from falling objects. Hard hats are also required when top or side impacts are likely. Banging your head on a low-hanging pipe can be painful, and depending on what you hit, it can cause a nasty wound. A hard hat consists of two parts, the outer shell and the inner suspension system. The suspension system is designed to absorb the shock of a striking object. Inspect your hard hat regularly to ensure all components are in good condition. Replace damaged or defective hard hats right away. In addition to protecting from impacts, 
Hard hats are also required when workers may be exposed to electricity. There are two classes of hard hat, Class G and Class E. Class G helmets are appropriate for most work environments. They provide protection against impacts and low voltages of electricity, while Class E hard hats are designed for working near high voltages. As we have seen, hard hats protect the top and sides of our head. However, without additional protection, our eyes and face are left unprotected. Our eyes are one of the most exposed and vulnerable areas of our body and are no match for the sharp, hot, caustic, and abrasive types of hazards to which they may be exposed while working. Standard safety glasses with side shields are designed to provide a minimum of protection from various types of workplace hazards. Safety glasses must conform to performance standards designed by the American National Standards Institute, or ANSI. Safety glasses that meet the ANSI standard will contain an ANSI mark as well as a manufacturer's mark. Safety glasses should be worn when there is a risk of flying or falling debris or a risk of blunt trauma to the eye. Because small pieces of dirt, metal, or other materials can easily get lodged into the eye, many companies require safety glasses be worn in all manufacturing, construction, and process areas. And as James Taylor now understands, safety glasses don't do any good when they're not used. I was in the shipping area where they build the pallets and the crates. I don't usually work in that area, but I just had to check on some paperwork for one of the shipments. James entered the area and approached one of the workers as he was building a pallet. When James tried to get his attention, the worker took his eyes off task and misfired the nail gun. The bad part is I knew better. I knew better than to enter that area without my safety glasses. I, I mean, I had them in my pocket. I, I didn't think I was going to need them. I was only going to be there for a moment. And I guess I wasn't thinking at all. James made a common PPE mistake. He thought that since he was just passing through an area and would only be there a short time, that he didn't need to wear the protection. This flawed thinking cost him the sight in one eye. All workers, whether passing through an area or performing a quick job, must take the time to protect their eyes from hazards. Wearing safety glasses also protects against blunt trauma hazards, such as a hand tool slipping or walking into an unexpected obstacle. As the types of eye hazards increase, the level of protection should also be increased. In many cases, the amount of debris may dictate the need for safety goggles. Goggles provide a complete seal around the eyes and keep out much more debris than safety glasses. In addition, goggles offer better protection from chemical splashes and spraying liquids, a lesson learned by Brenda Stevens. I was transferring solvent into a canister, something I do all the time. Just when the small container was almost full, I dropped it. I tried to catch it, but when it hit the floor, it splashed right up into my face. It burnt so bad and I couldn't see anything. I just started screaming. Somebody heard me and got me to the eyewash station. Thank goodness I got to the eyewash in time. Now I always wear my goggles when I'm transferring chemicals. In addition to our eyes, some jobs require us to protect our face as well. Jobs such as chipping, grinding, or chemical line breaking require the use of a face shield in addition to safety glasses or goggles. These operations can throw parts or spray chemicals with great force, requiring protection. Lester Murphy found out the importance of both face and eye protection when he let his guard down for just one moment. I just about had the brace ready for the bracket. It was getting toward the end of the day, and Dan and I were ready to get out of there. I've got the motor in place. All we have to do is mount your brace to it, and we can get out of here. Well, then this is perfect once I knock this little fur off. Come on, man, just give it to me. But damn, you know, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. That's when I dropped the brace.
Buster was seriously hurt in just an instant. An instant in which he decided not to put on his eye and face protection. I'll never make that mistake again. Injuries can happen quickly. This is why maintaining proper protection is so important, especially on the part of our body most frequently injured and closest to the action, our hands. In addition to being careful to avoid pinch points and nip points, wearing gloves is the primary method of protection for our hands. Before lifting, pulling, carrying, or holding any object, give it a quick inspection for sharp edges and corners, curves, splinters, or other sharp protruding points. If these types of hazards are present, do not handle the object without appropriate gloves. Unfortunately, as Blake Tucker discovered, recognizing when gloves are needed is not enough. You must actually take the time to put them on to prevent injury. It was a dumb move on my part. Um, I don't have an excuse. Troy was um, pulling some air duct material down and uh, asked me to help. You got your gloves? Kind of sharp. He even asked me about my gloves. And I told him, I said, don't worry about it. Let's just get it done. Blake knew the metal was sharp. He just didn't want to bother getting his gloves. When the weight of the metal causes me to slip. Blake suffered tendon and nerve damage on the palm side of his hand. I've had two surgeries, months of rehabilitation. My hand's still not right. I just had no idea how bad a hand injury could actually be. Our hands contain many ligaments, nerves, and tendons that can be damaged by lacerations or punctures. And as Blake Tucker discovered, it's much easier to protect them from injury than trying to repair them afterwards. When confronted with hazards to your hands, make sure to select the proper type of glove for the job at hand. Keep in mind that no single style of glove is effective for all tasks. Lightweight cloth gloves protect us from minor hazards, while heavy leather gloves are good for handling materials with rough edges, burrs, and splinters. Cut-resistant and metal mesh gloves can protect against an inadvertent knife stroke or a sharp edge while heat-resistant gloves of aluminized fabric or leather can protect against flames and intense heat. There are countless types of special purpose gloves, ranging from latex gloves to protect against bodily fluids to gloves for electrical workers to prevent electric shock. Remember, it's critical to wear the proper glove for the job. Ask your supervisor if you have any questions about selecting the correct glove for your job tasks. In addition to our hands, our feet also need protection from the hazards of our workplace. We often don't think much about our feet until we suffer an injury. Twisted ankles, broken toes, lacerations, puncture wounds, and other injuries can be very painful and debilitating. Many needless foot injuries could be prevented by simply wearing proper safety footwear. At a minimum, Workers should wear boots or shoes that cover the ankle and are constructed of solid leather on the top and sides. Also, choose a shoe that has a sole composition that provides good traction in your work environment. Never wear open-toed shoes or sandals in any type of manufacturing or industrial setting. Coming into contact with sharp corners, edges, and other hazards with open-toed shoes can cause serious and painful injuries. Most industrial and manufacturing operations require workers to wear safety shoes and boots with a reinforced toe box and puncture-resistant soles. The reinforced toe box must meet a minimum strength rating by the American National Standards Institute, or ANSI. This rating will be displayed on the boot. There are many styles and types of safety shoes and boots to choose from, many of which look similar to regular dress and athletic shoes. But as Brandon Walker learned, choosing to wear athletic shoes instead of safety shoes can be a crushing decision. I, I'd left my safety shoes in my girlfriend's car, so I just decided to wear my basketball shoes instead. I mean, they looked similar to my safety shoes, and I didn't really think anybody would notice. Brandon should have been more worried about his safety rather than trying to get by with his decision without getting caught. Well, I was out at the rack looking for some parts when a forklift had backed into the other side. I didn't see the pallet of material break loose and fall until it was too late. 
now my foot's crushed, I, I've got pins in my toes, and I'm wearing a cast. And I, I don't know how long it's going to be before I can go back to work. Keep in mind that many jobs require specialized protective equipment, in addition to the equipment we have discussed so far. When exposed to high noise levels, workers will be required to wear various types of hearing protection. This protection, when used properly, will prevent cumulative damage to our hearing. When working above ground, a body harness and lanyard properly connected to an approved anchor point will be a required addition to your protective equipment. Various types of respirators may be required to protect from harmful dusts, mists, fumes, vapors, gases, and other atmospheric hazards. And when our bodies may be exposed to extreme temperatures, harmful substances, or other hazards, various types of protective suits and clothing will be required. No matter what type of PPE you are required to wear, you will receive specific training on its selection and use. Make sure you fully understand how to obtain a proper fit, how to properly use the equipment, and how to select the correct gear for the hazards at hand. But above all, never forget why this equipment is necessary. When you choose not to wear required PPE, you leave yourself exposed to serious injury and death. It's really just that simple. Personal protective equipment. It will protect us if we use it. We have discussed the most common types of protection for our head, face, eyes, hands, and feet. We also briefly reviewed some other types of protective equipment you may be required to wear while performing certain specialized jobs. We've shown the serious consequence of not wearing appropriate protective equipment. And we have heard many common excuses for doing so. Something I do all the time. Didn't see what we had to wear. I didn't think anybody would notice. I, I didn't think I was going to need it. Don't worry about it. Let's just get it done. Remember, excuses offer no protection from hazards. Only your commitment to the proper selection and use of personal protective equipment can do that. And when you consider what's at stake, using your PPE is always the right choice. Think about it.